Hey, so today we are doing a underground feeder wire splice. Um, so I don't if you've seen some of my previous backyard videos, I have this abandoned pole in the middle of my yard that I've been wanting to get rid of. So I finally tore into it this morning. Um, kind of show you what we got going on. So the breaker that secures all this in the house is called swimming pool. Obviously, there's no swimming pool back at the house anymore when we bought it. Um, but there were switches and these outlets on these boxes and I found three cables. Fortunately, this cable has all the power going over to my shed. So I have no power to my shed with that disconnected. This is power coming in from that breaker. And then this was just a back feeded wire from that switch to here, which I already shot continuity on and disconnected on this side. So there was this switch, which it wasn't even <laughs> wired right. So the hot and the neutral were wired into different legs of the switch for some reason. But that's all disconnected. The cable's gone and buried. And I removed that switch in there. So this long cable I got going on is dead. So I'll just need to bury that. But I need to hook this wire, this UF wire to this one to get power back to my shed. So uh, did some looking around. I talked to one of my good buddies from the Navy who's now an electrician. And in my state, you are allowed to do underground splices. However, you have to use a product designed for it that meets like the UL code, which is what I got. So this is a Gardner Bender underground UF splice kit. Um, it's got the uh, copper screw-in terminals and heat shrink, wa uh, wa waterproof heat shrink that goes over it. So without further ado, uh, I'm gonna clean up this mess I made, get this pole pulled out of the ground and we will move on to showing you how to do one of these UF splices. All right, pull is out and grab my shovel. And I was gonna start doing some excavating because obviously I wanna get all this buried to the right depth. Um, <clears throat> for my area and my application, it's gotta be at least 18 inches. Um, the pole was two feet down, so that hole is already 24. But I started to pull out some dirt. Um, decided to pause and do the splice first because I'm just getting dirt on everything. So, and then I grabbed some isopropyl and some wet free cloths to just clean up the wires before heat shrinking. Um, I opened the kit. So it says it works on eight to 14 aug wires and it would do three conductors. It's got four splices. Um, so it would do three conductors and a ground. So I'm only working with uh, 14 2. Actually, I think this is 12 2. It's a little thicky, thicker because it's a 12 amp circuit. So, for the 12 gauge wire, two conductors and a ground, only use three. Um, but basically, you slide the wires in and tighten down the screws on top of them. So, I'll go ahead and clean the ends of the wires off with rubbing alcohol on both of them and uh, slip my heat shrink over which is what it came with. Hopefully this is three to one because it's pretty big. So hopefully it shrinks to a third of the size. Um, I did grab some of my extra street rack heat shrink in case I need it, just to be extra careful. But this is good, adhesive lined, looks to be marine grade, thick gauge uh, heat shrink that came in the kit. Uh, so let's go ahead and clean the wires and get the uh, splice installed. So this part looks pretty straightforward. Um, just going to start with the ground and one of them already loosened, which was that one. And go about halfway through the copper sleeve, which is there. And tighten it back down. Okay. 
So there's one and get the other two on that side and then obviously we'll go white to white, black to black and ground to ground on the other side and get that all tightened up. So let's do that real quick. <laughs> so I put one in the first time and realized it's going to be hard to get this solid core wire in one at a time. So I just redid it, uh, loosened all three screws and pushed all three in and tightened them down. So I will do the other side in and match it up. Alright, I'm done applying the um, splice. I learned my lesson from this side and uh, <laughs> took some more of the sheathing off. It was easier to feed in. But I am black to black on that one there. Ground across the top and white to white. Double checked all my screws are tight and in there. And before I heat shrink this up, I am going to flip my breaker back on, make sure everything looks good, uh, and then move on to heat shrinking. Alright, I flicked on power the breaker. Um, breaker didn't trip. Everything here looks good. I even went to my shed and turned on the light, turned on my table saw and a die grinder. Things that pull a lot of current. Everything looks good, so I went and flipped the breaker back off, verified it's dead again. And now we're going to get the heat shrink on. So this heat shrink you, I see, you see here is mine is extra it just comes with the kit just comes with this um, one eight inch section so I'll get that pulled over move mine out of the way I don't know if I'm gonna need them yet uh, and I got my heat gun it's not a really great one it's for smaller stuff uh, but we'll see how it goes So my little dinky heat gun is working, uh, it's a little slow, I technically need a much more powerful one for this you know, thick heavy duty 3 to 1 heat shrink, but it'll get the job done. Just some tips, I'm starting from the center and working my way outward, um, and then we'll see how much it collapses at the end, whether I need this uh, extra to help seal the ends or not, I don't know yet, but I won't bore you with all that, so I'll go ahead and finish heat shrinking this up. All right, I'm not gonna lie, that took like five, six minutes to shrink all that. It did shrink all the way to the base UF cable size, and you can see the adhesive came out on both ends. I got a good bond. Um, since I have the smaller, this is also marine grade adhesive um, heat shrink. So what I'm gonna do since I have it is I'm just gonna step it half onto the UF and half on this just for some extra protection, although I'm sure this will be fine completely waterproof and as this dry or cools off sorry it's going to get nice hard and rigid um, and protect the uh, splice pretty well so let's go ahead and get the other two pieces on and we'll wrap this up all right i did use the extra heat shrink the adhesive similar style that came in the kit just to be extra safe although i'm sure what came with it is good like i said earlier so i did that on both ends just a little extra adhesive came all the way out so time to bury it um again you know i spoke to a local electrician in my state and i have to make sure i dig this out and measure it to the correct depth i'm not sure what all the old wiring is at i'm sure i'll figure it out when i get there but at least got to make sure all the work i've done is done in accordance with code um and that's pretty much it for this again i'm not an electrician i'm a do-it-yourselfer um, I recommend you consult with an electrician in your area before doing any type of this work. But here is how you would do your own splice using a code or UL approved kit. And it has to be approved for your area, your region, type of residence, all that stuff. There's a lot of stuff that goes into that code. That is not me. I'm not saying to go out and do this. I'm just saying, showing you a way to do it. Um, yeah, so that's it. I'll leave a link for this Gardner Bender uh, splice kit I used in the description if you want to use it. Uh, but yeah, uh, let me know if you have any uh, questions in the comments. Thanks for watching. All right, bye.